keeping me in the waiting room. See that trick? <laughs> Keep him in the waiting room so he knows he's a less important trick. <laughs> and uh, what happened yesterday? <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Sorry, I, I had a duck walk past my little <laughs> path and I'll come back to you. I, you're very important to me, but exactly. nothing gives us the lesson of humility other than the people that we know. Hmm. <laughs> Hold the beat. Book. I just had a book. What are you doing? Peeing. Huh? I said I'm peeing. Oh, that's a great way to start. The, the conversation is going to change my life forever. Exactly. You got to release the old to let the new in. <laughs> this is what I feel about you, Captain Sweep, and your <laughs> exactly. sessions. I'm going to pee on you <laughs> <laughs> to start, and then we can get to business. Oh, well, not you. I just laid down one of your maps. That's, that's, that's how I dispose of them. This is what I think of your inflow matrix. Exactly. Remember I'm annoyed at you to lay out the inflow. It started with a banana peel, and this is how it ends. Uh, actually, uh -huh. I can take off this dastardly background now, because I actually have a nice one. Okay. I'll change mine too. Oh, nice. What am I going to do? I have a broken chair that won't stop swiveling. <laughs> so okay, and I'll go to my. Oh, your hellfire. My deadly place. Here, we have a new consulting client. <laughs> yes, Mr. Remind, we have you in our little book. <laughs> oh, you, yes. see that, you see that Ron Atkinson parody of Welcome to Hell? I haven't seen that one. Oh, you're going to love that one. Watch it. It's like a five minute parody. It's on YouTube. It's called Welcome to Hell with Rowan Atkinson. Uh, you die. Okay. It's going to be your favorite. <laughs> sounds good. Okay. So, what are we doing today? You said you wanted to walk me through that map. Yes. Your ideal job as a Starfleet officer. Okay. Let me ask you some questions. Please. Okay. So let's say personal points. What what do you do that has high value to you that you would like to keep score of? Just you. For just for myself? Yep. Not for work, not for anything. It's just for work. Just you. And this is not sacred space stuff like meditation and whatever. No, this is personal space. What would be the top five things? that you could do in personal space that would give you like, I did, I did something today. Exercise. Exercise. Yeah. Time in nature. Time in nature. It's kind of weird because I kind of work in nature, so it's kind of hard to. Well, it's different if you're digging holes and you're, or you're <laughs> sitting in a laptop, you know, ordering the universe. I know, it's true. <laughs> Touche. Um, I think at least once a week, which I, I used to do, I used to do some self care thing once a week. You know, like a massage or uh, whatever, or even just going and getting doing a sauna, or you know, I would make sure that once we, and I've fallen, I don't do that. I haven't done it at all. Okay. Um, so I think some sort of self care. Okay. Weekly self care thing. 
it's important to me. It really is. It grounds me. It makes me feel super nurtured. Um, what else in the personal space? I like reading a lot or listening to audiobooks. You know, I do that every single day, actually, these days. I spend an hour or two every day. Okay. So learning? So do you want like 30 seconds with this? Okay. <laughs> okay. Is well, it going to throw your flow off? I, I'll, I'll, I'll skip it otherwise. Keep going. If it's, it's... <laughs> hey, Armin, I'm in the middle of a meeting. Can I call you back in a little bit? Yeah. Me. Okay, sounds good. Go for it. Okay. One more. Um, one more. Something I haven't been doing at all is kind of either creating, creating music or poetry. Okay. Now, what about in the one-on-one space? Five things that I want to be doing? Yeah, five things that you'd like to keep score of that you could go, I want this in my life. But this is, these are the... Um, one-on-one space is kind of like mentorship, mentoring someone. I find I'm doing a lot of that these days. Um... I think being mentored. Okay. Um, it's not intimate space, right? No. This is one away. Okay. Um, well, it could be. I mean, it, you want to cross index the spaces and the fields. I don't want to keep score of my intimate relations, though. It feels kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> high school shit. Um, what else? You know, some sort of quality time with someone I love. I notice I'm doing like a lot of one-on-one -on -one work sessions these days. Like that's being really like this. This is an example of a one-on-one -on -one kind of. This would be more when mentorship actually from you to me, but I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one work sessions these days. Okay. Like people Zoom or whatever. So that's definitely something I'll keep doing. I don't know what else. Uh, one, 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 one could be, I guess, Zoom. You got work session, I guess, coaching, mentorship, I guess, it's the same. YouTube, blah, blah, blah. Um, play. One on one, yeah. Actually, that's a really great one. One on one, like friendship, connection, play space for sure. Yeah. Okay, now in group space. Okay. I send his text.
Okay, groups based team meetings. Parties. Councils. Family gathers. <laughs> yeah. I think I keep score of that though. I guess it could be uh, special events or maybe putting putting on an event. Yeah, sure. I guess that's a group space event creation. Yeah, well, that's a good one. And. It's a good one. So you got team meetings, parties, councils, event creation. You can also look at like what group things you've ever been to, what things have the highest value for you. It could be satsangs or music or uh, performances. Yeah, I think one of the highest things are like, I think also like there's a like certain level of like high level networking. Is different than just like meeting space, you know? Yeah. Okay, we'll go with those five. Okay, community sp community space. Fuck them. Hmm. I said fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fuck them. Fuck them. <laughs> I mean, you you did simplify my life with your analysis of my four modes of being. I did, eh? yeah. was, <laughs> What was it? It was Dharma, play, warning, or fuck off. Yeah. That was it? <laughs> yeah. It was like, that was a damn good map. <laughs> we knew each other well for long periods of time. <laughs> Do you, know, do you know what I think we share that's amazing is, is we can share that the theoretical, theoretical or ideal is real and that whatever we put on these little maps is actually what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we, we can share in this little fantasy world. <laughs> hey man, it's not that much of a fantasy to me. <laughs> I know. Well, neither to me. <laughs> that's why we share. <laughs> Fair enough. But you know, it's interesting, man, like um, things take time and they, they take longer for you than for me. You know, I wrote that Nexus white paper. I started in 2012 and I've been refining and refining and refining and refining. And right now it's getting a lot of interest. I've had a bunch of people read it. I had the guy, Scott Broomfield, who runs Regenerative Brands. He runs, he's putting together a $600 million impact fund. That's his vision, at least, whether he'll actually do it. You no. know, he seems pretty qualified. Him, Travis, Scott, the guy who's putting together Time Advisors, who's created a LinkedIn automation software to fund funds. He's interested in it. Kate Bryan, the founder of SoCap, who's pretty much the biggest conference at Impact Conference, is, is interested in it. Like, so <laughs> I'm sitting here being like, you read, you actually read it? Like, I got an email today. He's like, I read it two or three times. I want to meet. I'm like, you read it two or three times? <laughs> like, I'm so shocked that someone would actually read it. I know. And someone who can actually do something with it. And someone who actually do something with it. And so I'm like, oh, yeah, you know what? Maybe these things just take, like, we see things really far in advance, man. Like, I'm eight years, but you're my, like, you're, you're in field one. I'm field eight. So if it takes me eight years, the fuck's going to take you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Community space. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um. 
I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's where I feel more like the event. You know, you put it in kind of group space, but I feel like that's more in community space for me. What's it? Oh, well, I mean, you could, there's a difference. I mean, as a group, you could do event creation and then in community space, you can go to groups and you can go to events. You can. Yeah. Yeah. I think community events. I think there's two types of community events. There's community events for play and connection and there's community events for like Dharma. Okay. Creation or like active, you know, community activation. Okay. Um, community space. Maybe like broadcasts. Is that considered community space? Yep. What else? Um, well, what kind of, what things do you enjoy in the community space? Like music, dance, like, you know. I mean, that, those can be community events, play or community events, Dharma. Yeah. Let's say specific things like, um, I mean, you love doing uh, satsangs and, uh, Bring me sure. I really yeah. do. So I'd what? Like every month, I love to do a monthly satsang. Okay, so satsangs. Mm -hmm. I'd love to organize. You know, the I'd love to organize either a unanimous or New Earth Manifesto monthly community pulse. Okay. Um, Like I want to actually start building more community spaces. One thing I've realized that I haven't done enough. Unify, we've done it, but I haven't created, I see other people building like events, pulses, like they build a pulse, like that's really consistent and rhythmic in the community space about yeah. bringing people into a movement. And I think I'm finally ready to like claim that on my own, just build it. Okay. So new, new Earth Manifesto Community Pulse. Yeah. Okay, now what about sacred space? Meditation, the daily meditation. Okay. Uh, One thing I want to do is like, like have some sort of way to like challenge myself to stay in super cognizance throughout the day. One thing living, you know, the, the wisdom master is talking about a lot is living meditation, which is like being aware of being aware in the moment, no matter what you're doing. I don't know how to create a point score system. But like. <laughs> okay, I got one. Okay, again, we're again two. Again, we're three. Well, I mean, imagine there's a little cool app that you could be like, okay, I'm going to be aware of being aware. You click it. And then the moment you like lose it, you have to click it and you like fucking challenge yourself to see how long you can stay in an extended awareness for. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> the whole day you're just never get longer than four seconds. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sacred space. You got daily meditation. How about ceremonies? Yeah, I guess that's sacred space. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not really one for sacred ceremonies these days, to be honest. Ceremonial space just pisses me off for the most part these days. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll cross that one off. 
<laughs> okay, then what has what has sacred space to you? How about like meals or something? I mean rituals, maybe. Rituals? Maybe community ritual. I'm doing grand Randy's grief rituals these days. It's been interesting. You did one? Oh yeah. What did you oh, do? On. Huh? Salt Spring, we went to Beaver Point Hall. We did like a two day grief ritual. Oh really? Yeah, it was really powerful actually. Probably Randy's really stepping into his next level too. It's really good to see. See that? Was really, really embodied, really anchored. It was really moving for the whole community. It was really good. It made me like much more encouraged to like continue that work and see how everybody just wants to be enjoyed. Nobody knows how to process their grief, and everyone has a lot of it. So you better learn how to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So I think you know now that we're looking at this new land, I mean whether we get it or not, I don't know, but. Either way, in that vein of the creation of the community, I think holding the pulse for ritual is super important for sacred space. Daily meditation, community rituals. What about writing? Isn't that more personal space than sacred space? Well, I guess it could be sacred space, actually, if it was poetry and whatever. Depends what sacred space for you kind of I think reading sacred texts. Okay. So Jeffrey had his big day today? Yeah. I think oh, I feel so bad. That's gonna be huge. I think I think he's got a I think everyone's doing their home run. Everyone's uh, been building up like until, until now, you know? Yeah, I know. I'm, I haven't quite got mine yet, but, you know, I'm also younger. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, I don't think you probably know the significance of yesterday. But I'll tell you, one day after I'm dead, you can all laugh about it. But do you know what happened yesterday? I don't. Is I finally chose the 20 people that I'm going to first invite to be the 20 people on the first superhero team for the secret plan. Is like the 40th time you've done that? <laughs> no, but this is the first time that I actually think, like I had, like in my mind, I went, okay, here's the 20, this is the start, and I put a little, you'll probably see, because you didn't get, you didn't score any points yesterday, you didn't acknowledge my podcast. <laughs> So you got no points. <laughs> I I instilled a little point system. All you had to do was acknowledge my podcast. So you get points. And the girls won. They beat like we're doing guys versus girls. And I give them something to do, which of course no one is doing. Um, but you know how that is. I do. <laughs> I love that you're just going for it though, man. It's fucking great. <laughs> it's, it's It's like... I see in, you know, how many times I, I drop off because of depression or anger, right? Those two things are my, my sort of like my two wings <laughs> and they control me completely in terms of my creative output, right? And then I realize that, you know, probably nothing I'm doing may ever affect anybody, but just keep doing it. Like, I mean, when I'm in that space of output, it's right. And then I put it into distribution and then it's, it's like, there's no, there's no place for it. Right. It's just me and my fucking Facebook stream, my fucking Facebook friends who are just, you know, in my opinion, there's like a dull, empty space. Right. It's like peeing off a ship in the night and the dark in the ocean. And, but in my mind, there's revelation. There's like pieces of the puzzle that are like, okay, let's put that, put that, put that. And I mean, because you're a researcher, man, because right now you're in, you're still like, you realize that you're still in research process. I know, however painful that is for you to realize, it's true, right? Meaning that like, you're still polishing off what the inflow matrix is. And until that's polished to a degree where it comes with like a set of tools, a set of manuals, a set of landing pages, and a set of core things that can go out and systematize and operate, you're gonna to continue to be in research mode. And people won't be able to fully engage with your system because they're just engaging with just a set of maps that are in your own cognitive landscape, essentially. 
And so there's a, there's a, there's a quantum leap that I feel is going to happen as you're doing this, like, <laughs> okay, I'm just going to bang out all the basic maps. I'm going to get them all out. And then the next step, which is going to be the most important and maybe the most painstaking is your documentation. Yeah. You did it before. I've seen you do it. That one, I will keep referring to you, which was yeah. the best document I've seen where you went through the info step by step and you diagrammed it out. I wish you still had that somewhere. Uh, I don't know what the fuck that is, but that's like, that for me was the cornerstone of this whole thing. If I had access to that now, I could help solve the info way easier. Yeah. <laughs> you may need to recreate that or something may need to happen with that, but I don't know where it is. Yeah. No, I know. I remember that document. It yeah, got, it got reformatted in Word and all the things went everywhere and it irritated me and then I just never went back to it. But it was, it was the first time I attempted to explain this and this, and it was so different from it is now, but it was the, it was the basics. So. It was different than it is now, but it was good. You were like, this is a lens. Yeah. <laughs> you operate a lens. The lens goes here. You yeah. connect the lens to here and this is what happens. Here's an Enneagram. Here's a pipe. You just broke down the, the basics that you think people are going to get. But yeah. like, you took it to a place of like, here's a value. This is what a value is. This is why it's here. And you just like systematically broke it down diagram by diagram, piece by piece. And by the end of it, I'm like, oh, I get why this system makes sense. Fucking obviously. Yeah, this is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> now it's just like, here's a map. Figure it out or don't. You don't <laughs> pop the theme. <laughs> What, you don't get how 27 concepts come together in one thing at once? What's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, it's funny to watch one's madness over and over again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, let's keep going here. I'm just here for the laws, man. <laughs> What's that? I'm just here for the laws. <laughs> <laughs> okay daily meditation community rituals reading sacred texts uh, ayahuasca trips deep drugs uh, sexual fortes maybe like yeah tantric powerful tantric explorations yeah that's a nice one right on there it's part of my dharma for sure powerful tantric exploration and one more. Experiences of Samadhi. Ah. Experiences of Samadhi. Yeah, that's zero on my month. I'm going to be fucking pissed. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else is a damn waste of time. All right. Okay, now we're going to do something else. The next step has come in. Now, of the personal points, in terms of rating from one to five, exercise, time in nature, self-care, reading audiobooks, or creating music or poetry, which is the top one? Read the five again. Is there somewhere you can put them? Show them. Exercise, time in nature, self-care, reading audiobooks, or creating music or poetry. Ooh, see, the right now, my number one is what I do zero of. Guess, you can guess that one. Being in nature? No, <laughs> exercise. Oh, exercise, okay. So do you want that to be number one? It kind of has to be because otherwise it's like... Oh, believe me, you wanted it. Okay, so that's number one. What's number two? Um, number two in terms of like my most important? Yeah. Maybe let's put quiet time in nature, not just time in nature, because I can easily be in nature on my fucking phone. Right. Quiet time in nature. That's number two? Yeah. Then self-care, reading audiobooks, or creating music or poetry? Self-care. Okay, reading books or creating music? Creating music. I'm putting reading books five is because I just do it every day. It's like I don't need to like put that on a top priority list of things I need. It's just like that's easy just one to do. That's an easy one to do. I don't even need to think about it. Like that's like 
if I score too many points for that, it's gonna like inflate my point scoring mechanism. <laughs> okay, one on one space mentorship, being mentored, QT with loved one, work sessions, or play space. What's number one? I need to see this, man. Um, okay, you know, get off the uh, bridge. <laughs> Go into my brutal environment. <laughs> Admit that I'm <laughs> there's a little room <laughs> rather than a spaceship. Don't worry, man. You see my little room. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so much. Right, right. Yeah. Um, change the view to speaker. Okay. Mentorship, being mentored. Quality time with loved ones. Work sessions, play space. Hmm. I think I'd probably do. This is hard, actually. I think I'd probably put being mentored at the top. Good choice. <laughs> That's what. I think quality time with loved ones next. Next one. Play space. Next one. And mentoring others. <laughs> <laughs> number five work sessions <laughs> again because i do so many of them one-on-one -on -one anyways like what's the point of me creating super high scoring for that right well no because then it may it depends it depends i mean you can change these but this, it's just an interesting process right i guess for me i'm trying to create a sense of like putting really high point scores to things that i want to motivate myself to do more rather than things that are like work session it's like go to the farm in the morning like i'm gonna do one-on-one -on -one work sessions it's gonna you know, fucking happen like it's very generic right you know like great having a point score for them but it won't motivate me one way or the other okay so group space um team meetings parties councils event creation and high level networking What's the difference between parties and community space and parties and group space? Well, I guess parties and group space would just be your own select little crew, and then parties in, in the community space would be like big, big parties. Okay, so let me just change the word parties there to like core group hang. Okay. Like Zoom in when I hang out with them and we actually hang and play 94 or something. Like that's like a. Right. Okay. Which one? Show me the list again, please. I don't know. I think I'd probably take team meeting out of there. What do you think? <laughs> It's like, it's like being a cab driver and saying, I, I don't want to do any fares. I don't want to record my fares. <laughs> it's like it's the basis yeah. of your freaking business. <laughs> okay, fine. I guess this it. I mean, it's not just, well, I mean, I, I, it's your ideal job, right? So <laughs> your ideal job is no meetings. <laughs> no, I guess my ideal job in many ways is like, Like my ideal job is directing the capacity and directing capacity in many ways. Like my ideal job is like, I see so many of the pieces. It's like, what did you say? You said I'm a systems organizer. What did you, you gave me a word. Systems integrator. Yeah. I feel like that's my ideal job in many ways. 
like, I just want to integrate systems. I want to empower the I want to empower the nodes of the system, but I want to empower the infrastructure that allows them to integrate and allow everybody to play in a new integrated system and support the resource flow and just have fun doing that. And I want to be creative, artistic, playful, be in my bliss. I don't want to fucking sit there and do all the work, but I will do a lot of the work in systems integration. I'm happy to fucking slog and make that happen. Cause that's like me, that's like such high value work that I don't mind my time and life force going to that. When I'm sitting and doing like just a bunch of like, just fucking mundane shit, it's like, oh, I'd rather be fucking nature playing. Like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> like, I really don't. I don't want to do this shit. And I feel that way in so many of the things that I'm doing right now. So that's where I'm look, looking to make that shift. And looking for how this vocabulary in these spaces can reflect that shift. Okay. <laughs> Sun came out. Uh, so, team meetings. <sighs> councils. Fuck those councils. <laughs> I'm turning into you. What the hell is happening here? Aha! <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> <laughs> okay okay last time <laughs> all right uh maybe high level networking is number one yeah okay then team meetings core group hang councils or event creation core group hang Councils, event creation, or team meetings? Event creation. <laughs> Councils or team meetings? <laughs> and then team meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Synergy. <laughs> Very revealing right now. <laughs> I hate everyone. <laughs> the truth of the matter. My ideal job is all of you fuck off. <laughs> you can take all of your idealistic notions of creating a new world and dig it. It's funny how true that is, though, for the most part. Well, I mean, you probably see whenever you start to actually try to do something and you move from the abstract ideal design which is a really nice place to be and then you go into the human world everything changes it does and this is where i feel like on some level like i don't know part of me is trending towards more militaristic <laughs> <laughs> i know exactly how you think Dude, i bet you do I'm like, ah, oh, sometimes it's so easy to just be like, I'm a general, you're a fucking lieutenant, do what the fuck I say, get the fuck off the ship. Yeah. Know, but you're like, oh, that's not the new paradigm. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It, it works in the level, order. Like, what is the balance between this, like, council based, like, you know, everybody processing and everybody coming to this reflective collective consensus conclusion versus there's leadership and that you just trust that leadership to go and you just follow it and you, and you make it, things happen and there's a pulse. And I really am looking for the balance of those two right now. Well, I, I think if, if the idea is if we can get agreement on a cyclical pulse where we do meet together, mm -hmm. where there, there is an agreement for a sort of a grander strategy that doesn't involve you having to manipulate people to do things or them having to obey the big leader, but yeah. everyone is participating right in this, in this evolving kind of schedule, right? I mean, it's just synchronization of time. And it's decision-making processes. That's yeah. the thing about leadership, right? Like, you know, I have to make 100 decisions a day for everything, right? And because I make those decisions, everybody in my team can then make their decisions. So there's a nested set of decision-making. If I made everybody in the team equally make decisions, it would be a nightmare, yeah. right? And so I think there's this balance between this hierarchy and holacracy that has to fit even with the pulse time schedules. And that I think that's where this kind of 
blended paradigm that we're experiencing right now. Because a full thing to holacracy, it actually failed really miserably. Yeah. Um, and a lot of experiments been like, no, this doesn't work. And I think we can get to a synarchy, but I think we need a heterarchy first. <laughs> <laughs> what's a heterarchy? <laughs> you didn't read the gene keys i yeah what's the key where he's like uh we're moving from hierarchy to heterarchy to synarchy i don't know let me get that one Do you have the gene keys with you? I get it. Can we get it? I think so, yeah. Okay. I'm just gonna... Hey, if you were gonna choose one lens from the Harmony wheel and one lens from the Synergy wheel, what would you choose? <clears throat> mm, stewardship? And the harmony wheel. Oh, I feel like I'm, I'm. What's nine? Nine is governance. <laughs> you want to be like the captain? I don't want to be in governance. No, I'll use the pendulum and see. Okay. Yeah, Where okay. are Ryan's gifts best? Oh, yeah, beautification. 4.5. I like beautifying things. Where Where is that, though, on the center? 4.5. 4.5. You changed it from product? Yeah, it was arts. I mean, I was thinking arts, old paradigm, new paradigm, beautification. It just seemed like the whole thing was about beautification. Art. Yeah. But I like beautification too, but I like arts. Arts is more resonant to me. Okay. Yeah. You know what? That's really the end of the day. Like, it's not where I'm at right now, but it's really where. I was going to say any place that I feel like I could just powerhouse through in my own dharma would be art. I'm a musician. I'm a poet. I'm a creative. I have an artistic flair. I want to create things like Anthem. So important for the world. But I don't know why Like so much of my work seems to be in systems integration, which doesn't seem like art. <laughs> it's because you got inflow matrix, man. Yeah, it is. Because you can see... Where, where does that fit in? Like, it's an intersection of arts and research. I don't know. Which is kind of like left brain, right brain, complete polar, actually, in a way. My brain is forced to be very both world. Well, it, it isn't, it, isn't it that you see the pieces and you want to put the pieces together at a very high level because now your mind has a mapping system to actually see how these things fit together. Okay, so in terms of community space, community events, play, community events, Dharma, broadcast, satsangs, or manif New Earth Manifesto Community Pulse? New Earth Manifesto Community Pulse, number one. Okay. And then community events, play, community events, Dharma, broadcast, satsangs? I think community events, Dharma, and satsang are kind of similar, but... Um, I'll put community events, satsang, number two. Okay. I feel like I've been missing off. I've been really feeling the void that I'm not offering that into this community right now. And it, it feels like a void. So that, that doesn't feel good. So that's why I'm going to put that number two. I think community events play number three. What are the two? Community events, Dharma, and broadcasts. Yeah, maybe broadcast four, community events, Dharma five. I feel like in many ways, a lot of those are other top three are community events, Dharma. 
Okay. I probably would choose a different five later. Okay. Um, I think just by doing that exercise, oh no, we do that sacred space. Okay, meditation, rituals, reading sacred texts, powerful tantric explorations, experiences of samadhi. Experiences of samadhi is at the top. Okay. Powerful tantric explorations are next. Yep. <laughs> um, meditations are next. Okay. Reading the sacred texts. Okay. And writing. Okay, now if you're going to have a point system to differentiate between the number one and number five, what do you think? You know, let's say uh, 100 points is the average. Mm -hmm. How would you... Like, could 500 points be Sabandi, 400 Tantric, 300, 200, 100? Do you think that would be a good, or like... Uh, Actually, then you'd change my three on Sacred Space and flip it with five. Put five at three. Okay, so Community Rituals is three and Daily Meditation is five? No, no, I'm talking about um, the, in the Sacred Space. What do I have as three in the Sacred Space right now? Daily Meditation. And what's that five? Community rituals. That doesn't make sense. Why would community rituals be a sacred space? Because community rituals are like, um, I don't know. I mean, it's it's like. No, no, sacred space I put at five. I thought it was my writing. No. No. Want to change that? What are my five on sacred space? I thought community rituals were at the community space. Yeah, change the community dharma, whatever, to community rituals. You mean in community space? Yeah. To community rituals, okay. Mm -hmm. And change community rituals to writing? Yeah. Writing poetry, writing a poem or a song. But like okay. this is a Kirtan song, like specifically sacred space, like devotional context okay so in terms of like differentiating between number one number five in terms of points yeah i think like one would be like a thousand two would be like 700 three would be like 300, four would be 200, and five would be 100. Okay. But I mean, shouldn't we have some sort of uniform score system amongst all the planetary guardians? Yeah, I, I'm just, we're just sort of playing here that we could um, just start with something, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, from from there, like we got to create a baseline for the scoring system. Mm -hmm. And I, that's the big missing piece right now. Yeah. So, yeah, why don't I, you know, I'm happy to use whatever baseline you use for the five to one. Okay. So we just keep pulse there. You think it weird? Okay. Now, how much how much money do you want to make per lunar cycle? Thirty grand. Well, that's it's a zero right now, so thirty grand be great. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how all my work has led me to making zero for the last six months. <laughs> <laughs> Living on a farm, eight hundred bucks a month. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Oh, how the mighty have fallen. <laughs> <laughs> temporarily, temporarily. <laughs> That's what I said 20 years ago. <laughs> Poverty has a way of catching up to you. It's funny, like when you, at some point, when you truly disengage from money, it's, it's a bit insidious because I think money is a good, it's a good benchmark. And I think the whole spiritual path is, it has a hard time with money. I'm like, good, good with that. I think I lost, I, I was, uh, I was, I was a love prophet. I was in this party. I was at the front door and I'm working the door and I'm on mushrooms. And I, I was getting this. People are giving me money. If they gave me money, they could go in. But if you had no money, you couldn't get in. And just this concept was was yeah. such a big thing. I mean, they can't come in. They don't have. <laughs> but these guys can. And then these guys. I, I I never recovered from that. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I probably formed a core like some scarring belief system around this as being a gatekeeper rather than it being an access point. Yeah. Okay, so from this, I'm going to help design your ideal job. Sweet. How? I haven't given you anything. I've only given you my, uh, oh, you're not actually forming my ideal job around any specific vocation. You're actually forming my ideal job around my desire for my time. Interesting. That's an interesting approach. Yeah. That's cool. And creating a time, a time system where you look at your, your time and then you're equating it out of personal points you know one-on-one -on -one points like you're you're dividing your time by how much time you spend in these spaces mm -hmm. and then in each space you're you're doing something that's either equating to something or not that has value mm -hmm. so we have to figure out like i don't know i'm just kind of going step by step i every time i come up with something it's 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 step by step you yeah know? i like it I'm kind of excited about this game though. And I think this is a game that people can play with each other, like a personal self empowerment game and they can like leverage rewards with each other. Like imagine if everybody put up like 50 bucks or hundred bucks a month or there's some way that planetary guardians put up money or something like that. And like it got divided amongst the people who actually made the scores or maybe it's not money. Maybe it's something else. Maybe it's time. Like, Oh, another side thing. I met this woman who runs the largest time bank in the world. 200,000 users out of Brazil. She's created a fucking operating system to exchange time. And she does it. She What she doesn't do is, which is weird, she's like, everything, everybody's equal. It's one to one. And I'm like, that's okay. But yeah. she's got a lot of users and she's experimenting and she's in her network. She's, um, you remember Julian Gunderly, the guy who runs Green Planet, Blue Planet podcast? That's his partner. Oh, wow. So just and a little note there. Does she live in Vancouver Island now? Yeah, Victoria. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Community back. Back to where I want to be. Off this planet. <laughs> so what do you, isn't it, do you know that all the evidence is coming in that, you know, there's a 99.9% .9 chance that there's no, Nothing will happen to you, and, and they're still doing quarantines, lockdowns. I mean, 100, 100 million people are out of work, I think. Stupid. I really don't. I've never. I, I get that it's just a bunch of fear porn, but I just, I fully don't support lockdowns. I don't. I think it's stupid. I don't think we should do it. I think we should protest it. I think it's dumb. I don't think we should be doing it. However, um, I'm very interested to understand why countries like New Zealand have completely eradicated coronavirus and have it what is the deal with that how come in the u.s like two hundred thousand people have died and in new zealand they don't even have it like what what's going on <laughs> like i don't well, get it i mean they're an island and maybe they didn't lie about how people died <laughs> what do you mean well i mean any anytime anyone died they put coronavirus didn't matter what they had they just put coronavirus so None of the data is accurate. I'm wondering about that. I mean, he said 94% of the people who died from coronavirus had underlying conditions. It's kind of sketchy. 
underlying conditions like heart disease or <laughs> car accident or bullet. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, if, I guess everyone doesn't have my, my Facebook stream, but I mean, the amount of evidence against about it being a scandemic is like undeniable. <laughs> but if you just turn on the TV and that's all you watch, I just didn't think it could ever get this stupid. I thought it was stupid enough, but I didn't think it could get this stupid. I, so is that another chicken coop behind you? Or is that? No, that's my house. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how that fallen. <laughs> <laughs> I so okay I'm gonna do something with this I don't know what <laughs> oh there's some pretty good momentum happening for Ayana right now what's going on well all all of our funnels and everything are back up and they're working again so leads are being generated um Armin is starting to get get going with the sales funnels again I've taken him and put him in charge of vitality um I brought on Patricia and her firm. She's there creating all of our new branding. They're creating an amazing deck for us. I got Whipsaw, which is a pro top product developer in the United States, the guy who designs all of Google and Uber's products, Brita's products, to be our chief product designer for this Victor, the, the unit I've been wanting to do for years, which is like takes water and actually makes it the full living water, like, like the full product, our product, not selling some China product, not like our fucking machine. And so I think with this deck, I'm gonna go raise a million bucks to develop like the best fucking thing in water ever. Yeah, I want to do it. Like I know I have all this change the world stuff, but I want to I want to do the Dharma of water. Like I want to I want to like give it my all and create a machine that helps people have living water in their body. Like the best. I feel like good about my Dharma. I don't feel like I feel like that part would feel incomplete in my life if I didn't just go out and do that. Well, I I, yeah, yeah. So what would be different from that machine and the Kanga machine? Like just in general, does is it actually just runs the water through electrolysis, right? It's basically just running it over a plate, electrolyzing the water and putting it out. Um, but you know that water is not always like there's a lot of controversy around that, right? Because of just like, electric therapy shock to the water. I mean, it's good, but it's more like a medicine than it is like uh, you know drink this water all the time, right? they found that the benefit of the water, the best benefit of the water, and the reason why it's so healthy is because it has a molecular hydrogen in it. So we've actually extracted the one function that you can put in this machine that does molecular hydrogen and taken out all the rest, right? The filter in those machines are okay, right? They're not like, they're, they're good filters, but not the best. So we're following Victor Schauberger's work. We're taking the water through. We're putting graphene nanofiltration in. Then we're putting a Shilajit Ormus compound to remineralize the water to its highest vibratory state then we're taking the water through a living vortex then we're using resonant sound frequency to program the water with subtle energy and information like by the time you drink this water it's going to be like fully fucking pranic water it's like wow. and there's you know you don't need to like blast it with electricity you just like take it through the right mechanisms to deliver the highest quality water the only electricity you need is just a little bit of that molecular hydrogen generation at the end so does it has it been designed yet um, I've done a 3D model of it in my head and I've given the schemata and the specs, but that's what Whipsaw is going to do. They're actually going to go design it. Yeah, but I need to raise money to pay them. Uh, we should do a pitch like for 20 projects, a million bucks each, and then do it as one, one thing. Buddha's then, Grove. What's that? The idea we had, Buddha's Grove. Yeah. Then ha have the inflow matrix as the operating system for them all. You could call it a nexus. That'd be good. <laughs> call it a nexus, raise 20 million, a million each, and fund 20 projects, which we identify and we can, you know. I think we should do that. And I think the mechanism for doing that is the show, right? Let's put together a little show like Shark Tank, but it's our own version and it's impact investors. And they want to come look at who the first companies are to form this kind of fucking nexus. And we get like the top, some of the top impact investors to be on the show. 
And, uh, you know, we just get companies and people to pitch us, essentially, the best of. Yeah. And we're the guys at the desk. <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. Do you know which two things I picked? Yeah. Spirituality and transformation. Wow. Interesting. Like, think about it. Like, everyone who comes in just makes two choices. One from the harmony, one from the synergy. And that gives them a primary focus to connect us all together. I'm making a card about that, like a, a playing card. Yeah. You've got your Harvey lens, your Kennedy lens, your picture, and your points. I'll send it to you when I'm done. I'll make one for you, okay? Great. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like some subtle disdain to. <laughs> Get one excited. Don't go on your day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, brother. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for that uh, session. I look forward to seeing the uh, results. Yeah, I'll come up with the next thing, and then we'll take that. We'll just do it step by step, okay? Yeah, sounds good. All right. Love you, brother. Love you too, man. Okay, bye.